I'm reading to you today from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. This isn't going to be a very long video or big video, just, just a reminder, just a reminder that it is the authorized version, the King James Version, that is the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God for us today, given to us in English, and given us into English that may be translated from the English of the authorized version into other languages, okay? The scriptural Greek and the scriptural Hebrew have passed their time, okay? They were stepping stones to arrive at the finished product the authorized version English okay the Word of God went through a purification process of seven times okay but before we get into that and getting a little ahead of ourselves Psalm 12 Psalm 12 beginning at verse 1 Ho hopefully we can finish this whole thing in the time limit that we have okay help Lord for the godly man ceaseth for the faithful from for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Oh amen. Amen. Hold your place here and joke go to Jeremiah chapter seventeen. Jeremiah chapter seventeen. Jeremiah chapter seventeen, verses five on to verse eight. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth, departeth from the Lord. Help the Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. Yes, the godly man, it, they cease. Why? Because they're going to Jesuit train cemeterians like Mike Winger and this Mark Ward. Mark Ward, who a lot of people have asked me to make videos exposing him. Okay, Mike Winger and Mark Ward here on YouTube. There are a couple of, yea hath God said, Jesuit trained satanic heretics. Okay, okay, who want to get people away from the authorized version of the scriptures. Especially this Mark, uh, Mark Ward guy. Like I said, a lot of you have asked me, requested that I uh, do videos exposing Mark Ward. <laughs> okay, but yes, guys like that. Trained by Jesuits in the cemetery schools. you got to remember, every single, it doesn't matter whether it's Pensacola Bible Institute, whether it's Moody, Dallas Theological Seminary, doesn't matter, uh, Berkeley, it doesn't matter. The Jesuit order has infiltrated every single one. Jesuits run the cemetery schools here in America for sure and all over the world, okay? America is a Jesuit nation. Okay? All right? You have to understand that. You're not safe. You're not going to learn more of who God is by going to... You don't go to Satan to learn about God. You don't go to Satan for comfort. You don't go to Satan for wisdom. Because he gives you wisdom. What is, how does he give you wisdom? By questioning what God said. Yea, hath God said. Genesis chapter 3. Yea, hath God said. Thou shalt not eat of every tree of the garden. He questioned what God said. And then he said, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know in the day that ye eat thereof. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ye shall be as God. Your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And that's where heretics like Mike Winger and Mark Ward come into play. Because it's what you prefer. <coughs> find, a, find a Bible translation that suits you. Yeah. Yeah. Find a Bible translation that suits you. Yeah, yeah, that's not said. Mm. Go to the message. 
that be, yeah, as be uh, what is it? As of above, so below. Okay, New Age uh, teaching right in there. Go to the NIV or the ESV. That says that Jesus was cast out of heaven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or the New American Standard, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then they say, well, the oldest and the best manuscripts don't have those in there. That's the Ahab God said. That, dear friend, is thus saith the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 6. Okay, And those who trust in men, those who go to man in order to learn what God has said, what is the result? What is the fruit of uh, the Mike Winger type or the Mark Ward type? What is the fruit of modern Christianity in the church buildings? What's the fruit of it? Lopsided Christianity? <laughs> Let's see what the fruit is. For he shall be like a heath in the desert, dry, no sustenance, no water. And shall not see when good cometh, but shall inherit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land not inhabited. Why? Because they're not being washed by the pure water of the word. There's no uh, uh, rivers of water coming out of them. They're dry, they're parched, there's no sustenance. They are clouds without water. They have no nutrients. They have no sustenance, substance, or anything like that. Nothing like that. Okay? Nothing. But the contrast. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaves shall be green, nurtured, full of sap, well watered, okay? And shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. What is the fruit of today's Christianity? The yea hath God said crowd. Hmm? What is the fruit of it? Oh, there are millions of Christians out there, aren't there? And remember, America is a Christian nation, right? Yeah. Verse 2. Back to uh, Psalm 12. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. Speaking great swelling words. Having men's persons in admiration, right? Verse 3. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said, With our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You read, you read a Bible that suits your preference. <laughs> See, these Jesuit trained cemeterians, the Jesuits, okay, they're deluding you. They're had, they want to change what God said in order to suit your sin. When what God has said cuts you. See, you are to conform your life to what God has said. You're not supposed to change what God said to suit your life. Which is exactly the likes of Mike Winger and Mark Ward do precisely. Okay? But about verses 2 on to verse 4, okay? What, what about that? What about that? Oh, that is Isaiah chapter 30. 
verses 8 unto verse 11. Okay? Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8 unto verse 11. If I can get there. <laughs> Beg your pardon, brethren. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8 on to 11. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Get you off of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And of course this is echoed in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We want verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned onto fables. Fables! Fables! Such as the oldest and best manuscripts. See this? This is a Nestle-Alon 26th edition. They're up to 28 of these. Okay? This is the Greek New Testament that underlies the Bibles of today. Such as the NIV, the ESV, the New American Standard. The non-King James takes the Syrian text, which the authorized version is based upon, and the Alexandrian text, and blends them together. That's what the New King James does. Okay? But, your NIV, the ESV, which Mr. Mark Ward uh, quotes on his channel, okay? This traces back to Alexandria, Egypt. Okay? And these, the, the manuscripts, such as Sinaiticus uh, and Vaticanus, they're in the custody of Rome. And, you know, the Bibles are based, the Greek uh, is based, and a lot of the Bibles also base a lot of what they take in the Old Testament from the Septuagint. From the Septuagint, which our Lord Jesus Christ never read. There's not one shred of proof to prove that there is a before Christ Septuagint. Not one tangible, solid piece of evidence to prove thus. Okay? Not one. And see, but the uh, cemetery trained people like uh, Winger and Ward. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. But... Right here on the very one of the very first pages of this 26th edition, and they're up to 28 right now, okay? And just so you know, yes, this is the Textus Receptus, what the authorized version is based upon, okay? This has 17 or 18 editions itself. Go figure that, huh? Go figure that. But I want to show you something, okay? Here in the right uh, where it says um, uh, the acknowledgments, naming people who were involved with this, check this out. You see that? See where my finger is? Okay, you see that name? And uh, Bruce Metzger. Oh, wow. You watch A Lamp in the Dark and the follow-up movies thereof after that? Wow. Carlo M. Martini. Carlo M. Martini. He was a Jesuit. So Jesuits were involved with the Nestle Alon. The Nestle Alon, which the NIV, ESV, New American Standard, NLT, the mess. 
Uh, and the non-King James Version is the Texas Receptus and the Cyanidicus and Vaticanus thing blended together. Okay? And that's what guys like Mike Winger and Mark Ward promote. They work for the Vatican. Okay? They work for the Vatican. But see, their audience, those who they speak unto, are unregenerate, unregenerate, unsaved people. Okay? Absolutely they are. Who people like Mark, Mike Winger and Mark Ward preach unto. This is who they are after. This is who their audience, if so called, this is who their congregants are, is what I ought to say. This is who they are after. People that have a form of religiosity, but are not new creatures. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 14. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things, the spirit of God that dwelleth within you, with spiritual things, the authorized version of the scriptures. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You know, it, it bids you ask the question, well, how can someone read the authorized version of the scriptures and yet still be lost? Simply put, they don't believe that the, that the scriptures are perfect. So many out there. It's like, well, I read the King James Version because it's the best translation, meaning that there's better than this. And always they go back to, well, the Greek and the Hebrew, those are the inspired word of God. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Ready for a little blasphemy? The Greek and the Hebrew are inferior to the authorized version of the scriptures. Oh! King James Version is superior to the Greek and the Hebrew. English is the end times language. Okay? This, as well as this, the Greek New Testament, they're written in what is known as Koine Greek. Okay? The scriptural Hebrew is not Yiddish. The Greek tongue that is spoke that is spake in Greece today is not Koine Greek. Okay? It's not. And the scriptural Hebrew is not the Hebrew spoken primarily in Israel today. Yes, there are those in Israel that speak uh, scriptural Hebrew, yes, but it's primary primarily Yiddish. Okay? Primarily Yiddish. Yiddish is not the language of the scriptural Hebrew. Okay? The Greek and the Hebrew, dear friend, were stepping stones to arrive at the perfect product. The perfect product, yes. God's word in the English language. Okay? Psalm 12, picking up at verse 5. For the oppression of the poor... For the sign of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Puffeth. Puff themselves up. Well, you, you don't know biblical Greek and biblical Hebrew. What are your credentials? <laughs> yeah. Verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words. Pure words. Every word of God is pure. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. When the wicked walk on every side, the wicked walk on every side 
when the vilest men are exalted. Think about that verse. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Christians today, okay? Christians today. They go to their pastors. They go to their commentaries. They go to the Jesuit trained cemeterians to tell them what God has said. They go to MacArthur's uh, commentary on the whole of the Bible. Okay? And don't we have it in the scriptures? In John chapter 16, verse 13, go there. John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse 13. John chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will shew you things to come. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. See, Christianity, uh, those in the church buildings, uh, people like Mike Winner and Mark Ward, they are there to teach lost people religious things and give lost people a book written by men, the Bibles, to teach them those religious things. That's all they are. Because see here, and looking in Psalm 12, verse 6, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Seven language purifications the word of God went through. Seven. And they are, first, Hebrew. Okay? Hebrew. The Old Testament. Primarily, uh, the majority of it is written in Hebrew. Some of Daniel is not but is also attributed to the Old Testament, okay? But the Old Testament, the Torah and stuff like that, the Law, the Prophets, the Psalms, written in Hebrew, okay? First uh, purification. The second is the Greek, okay? Or the second, excuse me, is Aramaic. A lot of people forget about the Aramaic, okay? The third is Greek because the New Testament was given to us in Koine Greek. Okay? Fourth, Old Syriac. The fifth, Old Latin. The sixth, German. The Schwixter, uh by Luther. And of course, the seventh and final purification of the uh, language of Scripture, English. And the one that our Lord chose was the authorized version of the scriptures. There will be links in the description box. Like I said, this video is not going to be that long. Where we get more in depth about this, okay? They will, the, they will be in the description box for you to go over, okay? And have any questions. This is just kind of a refresher, okay? And like I said, this is the Texas Receptus, which the authorized version is based upon. This has 17 or 18 editions of it. This is the Nesalalan. This is, the, this is precisely the 26th. And there are what, 28, 29 maybe, of the Nestle-Alans now? And this is what, like the NIV, ESV are based off upon. But I want to show you something else, okay? I want to show you something else. This is the Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Kingdom Interlinear Translation of the Greek Scriptures, Okay? This, this is what, and this um, is very hard to get a, get a hold of. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't think they make this particular one uh, anymore. But I want to show you something here, okay? I want to show you something here. The forward here, the fro forward of it, okay? See this? See this? Can you read that? The Jehovah's Witnesses, their Greek that they use, okay? The New World Translation of the Christian Greek Scriptures, Revised Edition, a modern language translation of the 
Westcott and Hort, Greek Testament, first published by them in the year 1881 CE, Common Era. It's AD after Christ, uh, after death, okay? With which are included the valuable foreword and appendix of the said translation with numerous footnotes and an explanation of the symbols used in the marginal reference. Okay? <laughs> and also here, uh, right here, this um, highlighted area, okay? In the broad left-hand column of the pages of the main material will be found the original Koine Greek text as revised in 1881 CE by the renowned Greek scholars B.F. Westcott and F.J.A. Hort. And in between the lines of the Greek text will be found the word-for-word -word English translation. And there will be videos in the description box talking about Westcott and Hort. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You want to trust guys like, like I said, check out the information that will be for you in the description box. Okay? Please. Please. Check it out. Check it out. And I must also recommend Mr. Denlinger's video about the Bible ver uh, version issue exposed. He also did a very good uh, expose about that uh, very thing. Okay? Got to give him his due on that. All right? But the Word of God went through seven purifications to arrive at the perfect authorized version. And then there are those out there who say, well, the 1611 and the 1769 differ from one another. Yes, they do. By punctuation, spelling, capitalization, yes, there are certain words that differ within the 1611 and the 1769. But see, here's the thing. I could read from you the 1611 and the doctrines that are found in the 1611 are identical with that of the 1769 the doctrines that you will find given to you in the NIV the ESV the New American Standard and stuff like that they're not the same they differ okay and again too uh, Sam Gipp who went done went crazy he did a video uh, a couple of videos uh, about the authorized version and one of those videos he has uh, everybody read the same verse out of their translations and it's nothing but confusion and Sam Gibson himself says God is not the author of confusion but what do you call what just happened confusion and see that's what the new Bibles are confusion wind and confusion Okay? That's all they are. That's all they are. That's all they are. And you got to be careful about people who question what God has said. Which leads us to our beloved Webster, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Noah Webster. I like Mr. Noah Webster. Do I think he was a saved man? I don't really know. I don't really know. But you see, you got the thing about Noah Webster. You got to remember is this: he was translating. He was doing a dictionary. Okay, his dictionary was not done solely with the premise to define words within the authorized version of the scriptures. He uses the authorized version of the scriptures within his dictionary. Yes, but you got to remember the main basis for that, for his dictionary, was not. To define the words of the authorized version of the scriptures. You gotta remember that. Okay? You gotta remember that. And when it comes to things about Mr. Webster defining words within the authorized version of the scriptures, he's botched it on several occasions. Okay? He has botched it. Okay? You have to remember, dear friend. Webster's 1828 Dictionary, while it is the best dictionary that we can have 
for the author to define words within the authorized version of the scripture. Yes, we got to remember, this is fallible. This is infallible, the authorized version of the scriptures. I always, when it comes to a word, I will look in the scripture to see how scripture defines a word. Because within the authorized version of the scriptures, there is a built-in dictionary within it, okay? Utilizing the law of first mention, okay, and stuff like that. You can find the definition of a word within scripture. You don't need to go to Webster's 1828 dictionary. You do not need to. It is a helpful tool. I use it. Yes, I do. But when it comes to defining words in scripture, I will first, first search the scriptures to see whether these things are so and go to the Webster's as a last resort or as a follow-up. Okay? All right? And like I said, I recommend Webster's 1828 Dictionary. But then again, there are people out there who will go to Webster's 1828 Dictionary to define the word in order to promote their heresy. Okay? For example, look up the word holy day. Look it up in scripture first. And then look it up in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. When you got someone who will give you the definition from Webster's 1828 and not from the scripture first, that's that's proof of an agenda. That's proof of an agenda. Okay? But now, this, this was brought to my attention by a beloved young brother of mine. Please turn in your authorized version of the scripture to 2 John. 2 John. 2 John. 2 John. We are going to be reading verses 11 on to verse 13. Actually, actually, let's read. Let's read verses... All we actually read to, need to read are verses 9 on to verse 11, okay? 2 John verses 9 on to verse 11. Make your pardon, okay? Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. For he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, Receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. A dear young brother asked me, what, what does Godspeed mean? And he asked me that. It's so like, well, right away, go to the scriptures. And Godspeed, Godspeed, what does Godspeed mean? It's a, a, it's, a, it's a form of a farewell. Godspeed. God be with you. God give you success, if you will. Okay? If you will. It's a form of saying goodbye. Not a greeting. Well, how do you know it's not a greeting? Look at the scripture, okay? Look at the text, okay? Verse 10. If there come any on to you, and bring not this doctrine, okay? Receive him not into your house. Receive him not into your house. That's important, okay? Because if you receive someone into your house, they are already in, aren't they? Okay? So you see, receive him not into your house. Neither bid him God speed. That's very important. So see, uh, receive him not into your house. Neither bid him God speed. So God speed cannot be a greeting. Because receive him not into your house. Because it, we're being told if someone like a Jeho, a Jehovah's Witness, you know, <laughs> don't let a Jeho into your house. If you want to talk to a Jeho, you know, set out something outside, sit under the under the awning, or sit out at, at a picnic table, or go into your garage or something like that, or sit, or in the driveway or something. Talk with them outside. 
don't invite them into your house. If a moron, you know, a Mormon, come to your house, don't invite them in. Talk with them outside. Don't invite them into your house, okay? Neither. Bid them Godspeed. Uh, God be with you. God, you know, Godspeed. God bless you. That, that's what that means. It's not a greeting. It's a way of saying, you know, hey, God bless you. God, you know, Godspeed, okay? Because if we do that with Jehos and Morons, uh, specifically, because they are the ones that still primarily go house to house even today. Some of the new IFB guys do, and you got to watch up with those guys too, okay? But primarily with the Jehos and the Morons, okay? For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Yes, you're, okay, if you say Godspeed to a Jeho, you're telling someone who serves Satan that God gives them good success? Oh boy, you don't want to do that. So we see quite readily, quite quite easily in Scripture, Godspeed is a form of saying, Cheerio, old chap. Cheerio, see you later. It's a form of saying goodbye. Of, you know, Godspeed. I've said that to several of my brethren and sisters. It's like, hey, good talking to you, brother, you know, and Godspeed and what you're doing. You know, I say that quite often. Okay? So now you're asking, it's like, okay, Brad, well, well, why are we looking at this in uh, online? And I want to show you something, too, okay? First of all, let's see here. God speed. Okay? God speed. Now, good speed. That is success. Second John. <laughs> Second John ten. Okay. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Neither bid him God speed. He says good speed. But it says God speed. But he's like, oh no, that that's you know, it's a noun. It's like. Now check this out. Good. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. They, they, they do, they do this. Good speed. Now, good success. An old form of wishing success. See speed. Okay, let's see speed. Here's where this gets interesting. Here's where this gets interesting. Now, I want to show you this. I want to show you this. Okay. Now, he gives these uh, definitions here, and in and of themselves, they are, they're, you know, they're not all done with the scripture in mind. But check this out. A note. Note. In, in the phrase, God speed, there is probably a gross mistake in considering it as equivalent to, may God give you success. You see that? You looking at that? Okay. 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 Note, in the phrase Godspeed, there is probably, may have God said, there is probably a gross mistake in considering it as equivalent to may God give you success. The true phrase is probably good speed. Good in Saxon. Being written. G-O-D. <laughs> I bid you or wish you good speed. That is good success. Now, does that say the same thing here? Does that say the same thing here? The true phrase is probably good speed. Good in Saxon being written God. I bid you or wish you good speed, that is, good success. Oh boy, Mr. Webster. And you got to remember about Mr. Webster. He did his own translation of the Bible. Okay? If Mr. Webster were alive when Westcott and Hort came out with their 1881 Greek New Testament, Mr. Noah Webster, I can guarantee you, would be all over that, like stink on. I can guarantee you, 
he would have gone for the Revised Standard Version. He, he made his own uh, translation of the scriptures. He did. Okay? To define words, it's better off to stick with the scriptures. Yes! Yes, now, Mr. Webster gets a lot of things right. But his dictionary is not infallible. That, that's a botch, if I've ever seen one. Okay? That's him questioning what God has said. But now I want to show you something else. I want to show you something else. And right here, in the fourth definition of speed now, there are those of you out there who may remember. If you do not, then I'm going to tell you. There was a short little while when Webster's online dictionary was not available. Do any of you remember that? I do. See, I have a printed edition of Webster's uh, 1828 dictionary. So do several other uh, brethren. But not everybody does, okay? And you got to remember, you take Webster's 1828 dictionary and a dictionary from even the 90s and lay, lay them side by side and compare meanings of words. Wow! Wow! Prepare to be shocked, okay? But remember... There was a little while here recently when Webster's 1828 Dictionary was not available, but then all of a sudden it came back online. Why was it not made available? I want to show you something. Now, that, that definition of speed, that note that he says, where he says, God's speed there is probably a gross mistake in considering it as equivalent to may God give you success. The true phrase is probably good. That's yea hath God said right there. You're not going to get away from that. Noah Webster right there is saying yea hath God said. No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay? Okay? Yes, Mr. Noah Webster gets a lot of the words right. Yes, he does. But he botches it in several ways. Recompense with an S or with a C. God's word makes distinction between the words. One letter makes a difference. Okay? J uh, what? God is a spirit. You take out the A, God is spirit. How are you to know, discern which is which? Because God is spirit. That See, that gives confusion. Okay? Recompense with an S, with the C. S is a verb, C is a noun. Mr. Webster makes recompense with an S. The same thing as it could be either a verb or a noun. When God's word, check it out yourself. I'll put the video in the description box, okay? Um, God's word makes distinction. Every time it is with an S, recompense with an S, it's a verb. Every time it is with a C, it is a noun. Check it out. Check it out, okay? And if I got those backwards, forgive me. But one is a verb, one is a noun. God's word is specific like that. Mr. Webster botches it. Okay? But I want to show, read this to you. First, or fourth one for success. Success. Prosperity in an undertaking. Favorable issue. That is, advance to the desired end. And the end justified is the means. O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day. Genesis 24, 12. This use is retained in the proverb to make more haste than good speed. And in the scriptural phrase, to bid one good speed. See that quotation there? The brackets? Not God's speed as erroneously written? Now that is plain as day, yea, hath God said. Okay? Plain as day. It's like, not uh, God's speed as erroneously written? And when you look up here at the note, what Mr. Webster actually wrote, uh, note in the phrase, good speed, there's probably, that's yea hath God said. Okay? But I want to bring to your attention something. Okay? Now, I know you can't really see this, but see number four there? Can you see it? Okay, can you see it here? Let me get it up here. Hopefully my picture isn't in the way. Okay? Can you see that? Okay? Check this out. Check this out. Note the bracket there. 
not Godspeed as erroneously written. I want to show you something. Remember, Noah's uh, uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary went offline for a couple days. Like, what, almost two weeks or something? And then all of a sudden it came back on? Check this out. You know, you read the book 1984, where they're redoing words and new speak with their dictionary and stuff like that. Here's from the printed copy of that very number, uh, number four. Success, prosperity in an undertaking, favorable issue, that is, advance to the desired end. O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day. Genesis 24. Now in this printed edition, it just says Genesis 24. This, it says 24.12. Okay? This use is retained in the proverb, to make more haste than good speed, and in the scriptural phrase, to bid one good speed. In the written printed edition of the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, that right there, not Godspeed as erroneously written, isn't in there. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. I hope you can. Yes. In the printed edition of Webster's 1828 Dictionary, not Godspeed as erroneously written is not in there. I know there's this uh, young heretic, A, who doesn't even read a physical copy of the scriptures, but uses his cell phone or the computer. And also, there are several that I've seen. There's this one other uh, young, uh, young fine, fine Hamite man who um, doesn't read the actual physical copy of the scriptures, but uh, uses his cell phone. People, you want an actual physical copy of the scriptures. That not Godspeed as erroneously written is not in the printed edition of Webster's 1828 Dictionary. It's only on the online one. Or if it's in uh, like the green version, which I do not have, maybe not. But the point is, in the written edition that I have, that bracket, not Godspeed as erroneously written, it's not in here. But there again, again, Mr. Webster, he botched it right here. He botched it right there with this. He totally botched it with that. <coughs> totally. Totally botched it with that one. This is the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God. And see, what can happen is, what can happen is, people, people can be educated beyond their intelligence. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Look, Mr. Webster totally botched that. Okay, Godspeed is, yes, wishing someone, you know, Godspeed, good, good success. Yes, Godspeed, the scripture is right. Mr. Webster is wrong. And Mr. Webster has been wrong on several things uh, concerning definition of words in scripture on several things. I still recommend it. I still use it, but remember, dear people, this is perfect. This is an errand. This is given by inspiration. Okay? The Bibles, those were written by men at the dictate of the Jesuits. You need what God has said. You need what God has said, dear people. And if you do not have the authorized version of the scriptures, beg your pardon, then you do not have what God said. You have what man said. You don't have what God said. But how can someone 
read the authorized version of the scriptures and yet not be saved. Well, it's the best translation we've got, but it's not perfect. The Greek and the Hebrew, that's the perfect standard, but yet there are 28 editions of the, or 29 of the Nestle Alan, and there's at least 17 or 18 of the Texas Receptus. Hmm. What is that with the, uh, what is that about? What is that about? You know, because there are those out there who, they're, they're King James Bible believing Christians, but, uh, you know, when you talk to them, they don't believe what God has said. Oh, it's the best translation by far, yeah. But it's not perfect. Well, only the Greek and the Hebrew are perfect. The originals. Hmm. Hmm. What's going on there? It's Isaiah chapter 28. Please turn there in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? It's Isaiah chapter 28, verses 10 on to verse 13. Or 9 on to verse 13, excuse me. We've talked about this before. Okay? Like I said, there's going to be uh, videos in the description box for you. Okay? Isaiah 28, verses 9 on to verse 13. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And Peter tells us to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. And very interesting to note, you check that verse out. And I believe that's, uh, what is that? Is that First Peter? Let's go there. What is that? Is that First Peter? First Peter chapter 2, I believe that is. Yes, I, I believe that's First Peter chapter two. The uh, the Bibles. Uh, yeah, it's First Peter chapter two, verse two. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Guess what, cousin? Your ESV. Mr. Mark Ward. Your ESV? Doesn't say that, does that? No, it doesn't. No, something about it, 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 it changes it completely. And also the ESV doesn't tell you to study, to show yourself approved unto God. To be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, this, that Mark Ward guy, that guy's a heretic. He's a Jesuit coadjutor, trained by Jesuits. Stay away from him. Okay? Absolutely. But we are told to desire the sincere milk of the word. And also, Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Okay? Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah, oh, I was going the wrong way. Thank you, pardon. Okay? Isaiah chapter 65. Check this out. Yes, verses 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And we are to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 5. Or, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 5. This is quite impromptu, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Isaiah 66, verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified. Yeah, and the times are coming where they that uh, kill you think they are doing God's service. And in truth, they hate the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified. 
but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Tremble at his word. Tremble at his word. Okay? Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Okay? Those who are saved, those who are truly born again, converted of the church of the living God, they are the ones that are weaned uh, from the milk and drawn from the breast, being supplied, nurtured by God through the word. Okay? And you also got to remember, um, also, uh, what is that? Uh, Psalm 119, Daleth, so, or Daleth, Psalm 119, Daleth, Psalm 119, Daleth. Uh, that would be verses 25 on to verse 32. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou hast heard me. Teach me thy statutes. Lord, I am a lost sinner. Please save me. Have mercy on me. Please, Lord, give me understanding. Open my understanding that I may understand your scriptures. Please, feed me with the sincere milk of your word. Okay? Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Yes, help me to understand your word. So not only that I can grow thereby, but that through me, you, God, the Father using you, can teach others, help others. See, it's not just for self-gain. It's not selfish, okay? God gives you wisdom in the scriptures. Share it with people, okay? It's not to be hoarded, okay? What God gives me, I am to share with you. That's how it works, okay? Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Okay? My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I, hid, have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments, which thou shalt, when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Okay? Someone who is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, genuinely are going to seek what God has said. And we have the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, right here. And if you are truly saved, God is going to lead you onto it. Okay? Yes. But see, someone who is saved, we get all our nutrients, all of our life from reading the scriptures. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God who is our Father, speaks to us through the scriptures. Okay? That's how we get life. And because we have we compare spiritual things with spiritual Okay? Because we are diligent for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Okay? We're going to compare scripture with scripture. We are going to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Okay? That we be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And incidentally, this is not talking about being dispensational. Okay, this is a contrast between two people, two kinds of people. One who believe the scripture and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and have trust in what God has said and go to him. Okay, the other is one who reading the scripture is just something mechanical. They, serve, they read the scripture because they think in reading the scripture alone without God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit guiding them into all truth. But they think but just reading it 
without God within them, makes them right, makes them saved. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. No. How many people? How many people? Well, it's just the best translation. You don't believe what you're reading then. You, you believe that somewhere in the mishmash of all the Greek and the Hebrew, there is what God has said, but yet you don't really know. So you got to go to your little Jesuit trained cemeterian to decipher for you. That's cultic, my friend. Oh, and the Jesuit, yea, hath God said, cemeterians say we uh, of, uh, uh, who believe on the authorized version of the scriptures, King James onlyest, they say we're cultics, cultists, or cultists, excuse me. No, no. See, because we who are of the church of the living God and who believe in the authorized version of scriptures, we, we, we point to the scriptures. It's like, here, here, no, 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 no. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Check me out, okay? That's what we do. We point to the scriptures so that you will read the scripture yourself, okay? We point to the scripture. See, we who are of the church of the living God, who have God within us, we prophesy unto you. Prophesying today is someone who is saved, born again, converted, has God within them, the Lord Jesus Christ our Father, you know, the Lord is that spirit, within them, speaking the word of God unto you, who are also of the church of the living God. And those who are not convicting you and cutting you with the sword of the spirit. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. And lost people can read the scriptures and get certain things of the scriptures. But the deeper things, which only God himself can reveal, the truth of scripture, these people don't have. Why? Because they're spiritually discerned. They don't have the spirit. They have to go to John MacArthur. They have to go to uh, Bible is Mark or Beast. They have to go to, they, they go to Mike Winger or Mark Ward or whoever. Why? Because they don't have the spirit. They don't have the spirit. You read the, the authorized version because it's the best translation. So right there you're admitting it's not perfect. But you have this grotesque, bizarre admiration for the Greek and the Hebrew which have passed their time and come to this. The authorized version. Look at the fruit of the Bible translations. Look at the fruit of it. Look at the fruit of the authorized version. Yeah. Okay. But in verse 11 here in Isaiah chapter 28. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Psalm 8. Psalm 8. Psalm 8. Psalm 8, verses 1 on to verse 4. O Lord, Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. The enemy and the avenger, people like uh, Mike Winger and Mark Ward, who say, Yea, hath God said. And promote Satan's Bibles. Satanic Bibles. Yeah. Yeah. When I consider thy heavens, the work of the, thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people to whom he said this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they would not hear yet they would not hear Jeremiah chapter 29 Jeremiah chapter 29 Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 17 on to verse 19 Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, 
I will send upon them the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. And I will persecute them with sword, with famine, and I will persecute, excuse me, and I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse and an astonishment and an hissing and a reproach among all the nations whither I have driven them. Why? Because they have not hearkened to my words, said the Lord, which I sent unto them by my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them. But ye would not hear, said the Lord. Yes, verse 12 in Isaiah 28. To whom he said, this is the rest, wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was on to them. On to them. Who is to them? The yea hath God said. The religious who are not truly saved. But the word of the Lord was on to them. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. And of course... And of course, John chapter 5, we're almost done. Like I said, this was, this was just a refresher. Uh, got videos where we talk about this in depth, okay? John chapter 5, verses 39 on to verse 37. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Oh, I got my degree from Dallas Theological Seminary, from Moody Bible Institute. I am a, a, a what is it, Pens Pensacola Baptist Institute or PBI graduate. I'm a graduate of Berkeley. Yeah, I got a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on my wall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hath God said. Yeah. How can ye believe, which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? How shall ye believe my words if you don't believe what Moses has said? See, our Lord, and we've talked about this in depth, but our Lord is saying to these people, they searched the scriptures, but they didn't believe what the scriptures said. Because Jesus Christ was right there. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Right in front of them. God the Father. The Messiah. But yet they didn't believe the scriptures or else they would have believed him. So reading the scriptures was just a mechanical device to them. And they weren't being fed by it. Why? Because they were trained. They were scholars. They questioned. They didn't believe what God had said. See, our Lord isn't detracting from the scriptures. He's uplifting the scriptures because these people didn't believe the scriptures that they read, which told about him. But see, they were willing to come, believe someone who came in his own name and they, re they received honor from men. Just like the Jesuit trained cemeterians do. You see? So, so many out there, so way, way too many people out there, okay? <laughs> way too many people out there. Well, I read the King James Version because it's the best translation. So then it's not perfect. Well, only the Greek and Hebrew are perfect, but there again, you know. Pick a standard, pick a side and stick with it. I would have more respect for someone 
if they were to say to me, the ESV is the perfect inerrant given by inspiration word of God. But hey, Mr. Mark Ward, Mr. Mark Ward, yeah, um, is that ESV perfect? Oh, I know. No, it isn't, because only the Greek and Hebrew are perfect, right? Oh, and it might have been taken up into heaven, right? Right. And to refute this, what does the Jesuit trained scholar do? They dazzle you with their, with their uh, magic, their priestcraft of their, yea, hath God said, wisdom of men. But they're natural men. They have not the spirit. Mm. And they say of people like myself, uh, John 7, verse 15, And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Yeah, they profess themselves to be wise. But they're actually fools. And they worship and serve the creature themselves. Satan, created being, rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And, and again, Brethren, people, remember, remember, John chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. And I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will guide you to the authorized version of the scriptures will. And we are told in Acts chapter 17 in Acts chapter 17 that we are to search the scriptures daily. Acts chapter 17 verse 11 These were more noble than those in Thess Thessalonica. Noble. It's a noble thing to, to, to do what? That they received the word, uh, word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. See, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Okay? You search the scriptures daily, that's a noble thing. And you receive the word with readiness of mind. <laughs> this is superior to the Greek and the Hebrew. You don't see people nowadays going do, uh, going out or quoting to each other unless they're in a, a Jesuit uh, college of course but most people they're not carrying around interlinear Bibles okay the Greek and the Hebrew just like the Hebrew the Aramaic the Greek the old Syriac the old Latin German okay they all were stepping stones to arrive at this we're through we're through because the perfect word of God is given to us the authorized version of the scriptures this is superior this is superior okay so it's going to be it for this short little video um, please consider these things please go through the um, videos that will be in the description box for you to go through uh, please consider those um, yeah this is very serious. Stay away from guys like Mike Winger and Mark Ward. Heretics. Jesuit trained cemeterians. Watch out for them. Okay? Watch out for them. But, please consider these things that we have talked about today. Okay? Look at the videos in the description box for any more information. Any questions, feel free to ask. That's going to be it for this uh, quick video. Um... Please keep us in prayer. Please keep us in your prayers. We pray for so many of you. Um, yesterday I had a chance to talk to a brother who um, was facing some disgusting accusations. A brother from Oregon. Um, please keep a brother in Oregon and his wife in, uh, in your prayers um, because this brother is going through some incredible accusations, going through some hard times right now. Also, our brother, my best friend, Alexander Hartley, please keep him in your prayers. Um, please keep, pray for each other. 
Please pray for each other. Keep each other in prayer. Speak to one another. Because we're all we have. Okay? And also, too, um, please keep your servant in prayer. Um, there are some. Uh, there are two vi very big videos coming. Um, two very big. And the Lord is... Um, I almost... This video almost didn't come to pass today. Um, but this was just, like I said, short in comparison to what normally... Uh, the Lord has me to do. But um, two very big videos are coming um, start uh, sometime next week. Um, please pray for me that uh, the Lord lead me and guide me in these two big videos. Um, one is we're going to be addressing the Sabbath. Okay? Uh, and the other one, which one died on the cross? And which one went to hell? That's a very big question, and Lord willing, the Lord's going to lead and guide on uh, these two big videos to um, to answer these things. So, but that's that's what's coming. So, anyway, I love you. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, this was very impromptu, um, so beg your pardon. Thank you. Love you. I'll see you in the next video. Okay.